What's up everybody and welcome to a video that was supposed to come out quite a few days ago. My top mods for Skyrim for 2016. So it's going to be a list of a lot of mods that were in my opinion just some of the best or the greatest releases for Skyrim Special Edition. Obviously we had a huge influx of mods so it is very difficult to make it down to a list of 10 individual mods but I do think I managed to get a pretty good list that kind of covers all the bases and really gives you a more complete game if you have all these mods installed. With that being said if you guys do want to support this video one way you could do that is by leaving a comment or a like due to YouTube's new algorithm that's just the best way to promote different videos. On top of that, it's important to remember when watching this that these are all going to be my opinion, so if you have a different opinion, just let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what some of your favorite mods are as well, but with that, let's just jump right into it. So the first mod I do want to show you guys is probably going to come as no surprise to many of you, and that's going to be Immersive Armors. This mod was basically one of the most popular mods for Skyrim, and now its port over to Skyrim Special Edition did really define the game and again make it one of the most downloaded and endorsed mods available. Unfortunately, at least at the time of recording this video, it is yet to be ported over to Xbox One, although the mod author is still adamant that this is coming. What makes Immersive Armor stand out so much as such a great mod is simply because of how much detail and quality is in each and every armor in this mod. And on top of that, just how many armors it does add. When you download this, you're going to really see a different game simply because so many characters are going to be wearing different things that they otherwise would be. This is going to be a big compilation from a bunch of different mod authors. All the armors in this, again, are meant to be immersive and lore friendly, so it's not going to look weird or stand out in your game. But on top of that, since all these different armors do have different mod authors, there's not much sacrifice as far as trying to mass produce armors. All of them have a lot of attention to detail and a lot of quality to themselves. All around, this is pretty much one of the best armor mods to download right now. We really don't have any alternatives as far as armor pack goes, and I think it comes as no surprise as one of the best mods of the year. So next up is Vivid Weathers, another mod that I'm sure many of you are not surprised that's going to be on this list. I've talked time and time again why Vivid Weathers is such a good fit for Skyrim Special Edition specifically. What this mod is going to add in is a ton of new weather types, but really what makes it stand out from some of the other mods is the fact that it actually creates a vivid filter for the game. So a huge part of Skyrim and really Bethesda games on PC is ENBs. These make the games look much lighter, changing depth of field things and some different lighting changes. Obviously Skyrim Special Edition bringing mods to consoles doesn't have ENBs. Bees. I think Vivid Weathers is your best alternative to that and really just going to make the game look a lot better on top of adding in a ton of new and unique weathers. There's some other texture overhauls but I don't think anything really compares to the lighting changes made by this mod and again I really do think it is a substantial upgrade from previous Skyrim. I personally have not yet downloaded an ENB for Skyrim Special Edition despite me using it consistently for Fallout 4 and the Old Rim. Vivid Weathers definitely is a very full package adding in over a hundred new weathers as well as again these lighting changes which I think is the real substantial part as to why I love it so much. If you're a console user, I think it is a must download for you simply because of how much it changes and how much it adds. And for PC users, it still is a great option and really better than I think all the other weather mods out right now. So next up we have Apocalypse, and really this is going to be more about all of Anai Scion's mods. Apocalypse itself is going to add in over 150 new kind of immersive and lore friendly spells into Skyrim. These are integrated seamlessly, so it's really just like there's a ton of new options as far as magic goes. It really doesn't even feel so much like a mod as much of a Bethesda sponsored DLC or something like that. And again, this is what I mean when I say all of Anai Scion's mods, because that's really what embodies almost all of his mods. Between Apocalypse, Ordinator, Summer Mist, and Wildcat, all these are very lore friendly and immersive overhauls for Skyrim. I actually had a really hard time picking which one of them to include, so I'm kind of just including all of them in this category. I especially feel like these are important for a game like Skyrim Special Edition because it is a lot of people's second time around playing Skyrim or third, fourth, fifth, tenth. These are mods that are going to change your game enough that it feels like a slightly different experience, but not completely overhaul it so it feels like you're playing a different game. A lot of them are, in my eyes, totally enhancements, and again, just adding a ton of new content for you to have different experiences through your new playthrough. I'd recommend downloading all of his mods simply because of how high quality they are and how well they fit into the game. So next up we have Immersive Patrols. This is a really cool mod. What this is going to add in is a bunch of patrols from some of the different factions in Skyrim. So you'll see actual military patrols walking around and even cooler than that, around some of the different locations you'll actually find battles between some of the different troops. Sometimes patrols will get into conflict so at different forts you'll just see battles going on but there's some designated large battles including 30 to 40 different people again at some predisposed locations that are kind of appropriate to do so. It really is just a big quality of life improvement on Skyrim. I feel like when you play through 
through the vanilla game, especially after having this mod, you're going to realize how few soldiers there are around. Even at some of the different cities, there's only like six guards, where after installing this mod, you'll often see patrols coming out and into the city, so there'll typically be an extra five to ten guards around. On top of that, I actually like the continuity of this mod. If you go through the quest and one faction does win the civil war, the other faction's patrols will be large in part eliminated. There's just a really cool attention to detail and it is nice to see it. Although again, you are having more NPCs on screen. While using this personally, I didn't really notice any hit to FPS or performance in any way. And all around, it really just is a cool mod and something I kind of wish was in the vanilla game. Next up, we do have Weapons of the Third Era. This is going to be my personal favorite weapon mod out of the bunch for a number of reasons. First and foremost, it is very lore friendly. All the weapons in this pack do feel pretty unique, but not unique enough that they don't fit into Skyrim itself. On top of that, there's a number of different variants for each and every weapon in this pack that kind of give them each a distinctive look and feel. A glass variant of a weapon is going to be pretty different than a steel variant of a weapon, and I feel like this mod accurately depicts that. And again, all the weapons in this pack feel like a natural progression from the weapons in vanilla Skyrim. It doesn't feel like anything like, oh, how did that end up here? At the end of the day, it is a weapon pack, so it definitely is going to enhance your game. All these are integrated into the level list very naturally and organically. You don't see anyone holding crazy weapons that you otherwise wouldn't think they would be. And all around again, it is just extremely high quality and in my eyes, one of the best. So next up, we have Open City Skyrim. This is one of my personal favorite mods. If you've somehow never heard of this mod, more or less what it does is when you go to the city gates now, they will just open naturally like a normal door rather than going through a loading screen. This makes passing through cities feel just much more natural and organic. That loading screen really did take you out a bunch. After installing this mod, you'll realize how much of a quality of life improvement this is. Although many of you have probably heard it, it's a very simple mod, but again, I think it's a huge mod and something I really wish was in the vanilla game. Next up we have Scope Bows SE. This is a mod I overlooked at first. I didn't really think it'd be that substantial of an improvement. All it really does is add a scope to a lot of different bows and I felt like that was kind of weird. When you think of a bow and arrow, you don't really think of a scope being attached to the side of it. Well, after installing this mod and playing with it for a little while, I honestly can't go back to using regular bows. This is such an improvement over my bow experience and just having that little reticule there, even though you still have to account for drop and things like that, I feel like it just makes shooting a bow so much more enjoyable. I also really like playing with my HUD off, one, because when recording videos, I feel like it just is more aesthetically pleasing, but really just for me personally, I just think minimal HUD usage is just more fun and gives you a better experience in Skyrim and Fallout. Well, obviously trying to shoot a bow without a crosshair is very difficult. This gives you a good alternative to that, and I feel like just makes things look a lot nicer and simpler. This mod is integrated very nicely. All the different bows do have different options for scopes, as well as it actually adds in a few custom bows that otherwise wouldn't be available. If you're on the fence about this mod, I would definitely recommend downloading it. I was on the fence for a while, downloaded it, and now I fall in love with it and it very quickly became one of my must download mods. So next up we have Sophia the Funny Follower mod. What this is going to add in, as you may have guessed, is Sophia, who is actually kind of a witty or almost comical follower that is going to act like almost every other follower. She might not have as much depth or detail as something like Inigo or even Vilya, but I feel like the voice work on her is just a bit better than those two. I really did like the voice work on here. I feel like it was extremely high quality. You have to take me with you, otherwise I might die and you wouldn't want that on your conscience. But even on top of that, I genuinely found her funny. When I had her around, she would make witty comments, whether you were in combat or doing a quest. And again, maybe it's just my sense of humor, but I found these comments to oftentimes be genuinely funny. You can talk to her and get more in depth as to why she's there and stuff like that. But again, I feel like she just stands out from some of the other followers. When followers are kind of at the end of the day all the same, they'll probably just run into enemies and suicide. She at least was funny in the process, which again, made me really enjoy my time with Sophia much more than some of the other options out there. And again, at least in my eyes, stand out pretty noticeably from some other follower mods. So as the penultimate mod, we do have Unique Uniques. I find this to be an extremely cool mod, both in concept and in execution. What this mod is all about is it's meant to create a unique and distinctive variant of all the unique weapons in Skyrim. So previously, unique weapons were very similar to their normal counterparts. They maybe had a slight different look, but large in part, you couldn't really distinguish them other from a stats change. Well, Unique Uniques strives to change that, making them have different models and a lot of times have different textures as well. When using this mod, weapons definitely feel totally unique and different. It feels like you're holding something special, not just another weapon that's in your inventory. But even beyond that, the actual models of the weapons themselves are extremely high quality. When I made my video on the top five weapon mods, I made this as kind of an honorable mention simply because it really is a very practical and high quality weapon mod in its own right. Obviously all the weapons in the mod would be very hard to find and difficult in that sense, but there's a lot of time and attention to detail put into every one of these weapons and each of them have their own kind of personality and characteristics after downloading this mod. It really is a huge improvement over the unique weapons in Skyrim and something that probably should have been there from day one but Bethesda has a knack for kind of just putting in unique weapons as having a stat change and a name change and calling it a day. 
So last but certainly not least, we have Ruta or Rauta. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Regardless, what this is going to add in is a Stormcloak or Warrior Cabin. This is going to be located right outside Windhelm next to the Windhelm Stables, and this is going to be a house mod by Eleonora. I like this mod for a number of reasons. One, I personally sided with the Stormcloak, so it kind of was a little biased in that sense. But even beyond that, this house looks aesthetically pleasing both from the inside and the outside. Looking in at the house, it feels like a very warm and cozy feel to it. But on top of that, when you actually go in, something Eleonora does very well with her mods is it made the house feel full. A lot of other vanilla houses is in Skyrim kind of feel empty or not like someone's living there. In this one, it makes it feel like, again, someone's living there without it making messy or cluttered. There's simply stuff around and it feels very natural and organic. On top of that, a lot of the crafting options are outside, which is really nice. After using this mod for a while, you'll realize you'll oftentimes fast travel home simply to go craft something and not having to go through the load screen to get into the house is very nice and I really just like that feature. In my eyes, the best house mod to download. That's pretty much going to wrap it up for my top 10 mods of Skyrim Special Edition for 2016. If you guys did watch to this point in the video, let me know by commenting fruitcake down below. I actually really enjoy reading through your guys' comments and seeing all these different fruitcakes. It's not easy for me to tell how long you guys watch in the video, and it is really satisfying to see people watching through the whole 10 minutes of me talking. Regardless, as always, I thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, what are some of your favorite mods that I not include something that you're like, how did he not include that? As always, thank you for watching again, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.